This is Bishop Gregory Brewer of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida, delivering the homily at Thursday Eucharist Diocesan House, Orlando, July 25th, 2013. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I uh, have three books in my hand. The first I want to show you is a book that actually was given to me as a tongue-in-cheek gift. It came out of Vernon Quigley's library. It came from his daughter. And the title of it is, How to Become a Bishop Without Being Religious. <laughs> On the back, you don't really have to be religious to succeed in ministry. You just have to look that way. Yes. <laughs> and this is a satirical jab at all of those people who, in essence, get into the ministry for the sake of status. Uh, by contrast, another book that I'm presently reading by Brendan Manning, one of my favorite authors, is called The Importance of Being Foolish. Not earnest, foolish. And in some ways, this contrast is exactly what is being highlighted in the scriptures today. Um, we begin with the Jeremiah Baruch story. What's going on is, is that Baruch is Jeremiah's scribe, and Jeremiah is an important figure in the court. And so Jeremiah, young, ambitious man, bright, attaches himself, chooses to be Jeremiah's scribe, and all of a sudden everything begins to go sideways. Jeremiah falls out of favor. He's actually in a position where his life is now being threatened because he's prophesying death and disaster rather than peace and prosperity. And that catches Baruch entirely unaware. And so God actually speaks through Jeremiah to Baruch about what's going on because Baruch is crying out, I can't bear this, the grief is overtaking me. In other words, I didn't sign up for this, in essence is what he's really saying because he is facing the possibility of imprisonment or worse uh, just because of his association with the now completely out of favor and probably going to jail prophet Jeremiah. And God says to him, why are you thinking great things for yourself? In other words, your ambition is entirely out of place. He said, guess what? I am bringing disaster to Israel, but I am going to spare your life. That's what he says in a nutshell. In other words, don't think this is the time to climb the ladder and be thought of as successful the whole, because the whole business is under judgment. In many ways, that word from God through Jeremiah to Baruch <coughs> is God's word to us as we think of the example and the application of Jesus' words to the sons of thunder, James and John. And of course, we remember James' martyrdom today, the first of the apostles, king killed pretty quickly by King Herod Agrippa. Uh, James clearly did not have a long and successful career. And in other words, what he's saying to us, it seems to me, through these passages is that God really does, if we're going to be his servants, have to get at those things that exist within all of us, myself included, that really desire to be well thought of, to be praised, to be considered well-spoken, gifted, or even in some cases just to be light in a way that actually gets in the way of us being bold for being a Christian. In other words, God is trying to get at that desire to fit in. Because so long as that lurks within us, as it does for almost all of us, there will be those points where God asks of us courage and we will not know how to muster it. And so... How different, for example, would listen to, listen to James, a different James, who says to his readers, count it all joy when all of these trials come upon you because the testing of your faith is producing endurance. That's a very different attitude than what most of us have when things go, get tough in our lives. We assume either that God is after us or that we've done something wrong and we need to repent and therefore God is calling that to our attention. Not that he's actually just trying to what the scripture describes as harden us to difficulty. So we know how to endure, so that when the opposition comes, it's not going to knock us out of the game. Let me read to you a quote. This is the third book. This is Matthew Henry's commentary on Baruch's dilemma and how it applies to us. 
He says this, Please note, the frown of the world would not disquiet us as much as it does if we did not foolishly flatter ourselves with the hope of the world's smiles and court and cover their approval so much. I think that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, we can think about James being martyred and give thanks for his courage, but for us, this pantheon of saints is meant to be, in essence, God's word to us by their example. And it seems to me God's word to us is that we may not, probably, face martyrdom in this generation among the people in this room. But we are called to be bold. And for that to happen means we need to be willing for God to deal with our need to be liked.